Let's start our quick overview at the very beginning of a project. We'll start in Revit with some mass elements, and then we'll move to Insight to get some quick, accurate data about our project. For this example, I want to start with an empty file. We'll start with one of the out-of-the-box Revit templates, just so that you know that there's nothing that's been done ahead of time. You can see how quick and simple the entire process is. So we'll start with the out-of-the-box template. We'll give it a name. And then we'll start developing some initial ideas based on our program. Square footage, different numbers of floors, different locations, and compare some results. In the 3D view, you can see we have a couple levels already created. I'm going to go to the massing tab and start the in place mass command and then give it a name and then I'll start sketching the footprint of the area that I want to study first. Uh, we'll ultimately end up with a volume here that will be a three-story building. These first few examples are metric using millimeters. Later we'll have some imperial examples just using both here to give a more of an international appeal to the course overall. So now we've, we've extruded the footprint into a 3D volume. We'll go to an elevation and use the standard Revit level tool to add a third level. And then I'm also going to add a fourth one to represent the roof level. This isn't entirely required, but one thing that's really important is once you've created the mass, there's only two other things you have to do to start getting some early energy analysis results. The first one is to select the mass. First we'll switch to a 3D view just so you can see the results a little better. So we select the mass, click the mass floors option, and then apply those levels to this mass. Now we have an analytical floor that conforms to the footprint of the building where the level passes through the geometry. We can even schedule that information already and have a total gross square footage of the building. The second most important thing, now that we've had have the geometry and added the levels, is to specify our location on Earth. At this point, no other inputs are required, not even true north. We'll take a quick look at the energy settings dialog and not actually change anything at this point. Now we're going to generate an insight run. We won't look at the energy model yet that Revit creates inside of the Revit project environment. We'll save that for later. First we get an email saying that our project was received. And then after a few minutes as this processing in the Amazon servers, the AWS environment, will get an email saying that the run has completed. You can click on optimize to look at the results, but it's better to use a modern browser such as Chrome. Once the analysis is done, it'll show up here under the uncategorized section. We can create a new project in the Insight environment and pull that particular run that we just did into this new project that we're creating. By having all the projects, or all the runs I should say, into one project we can compare the results easily. Here I'm assigning an image. To make the project more recognizable, as you can see there are several other ones that I had listed there. Now we click on the project and it'll open up the results. In the lower left I clicked on the map or the location for the project and it opened up some weather information. So I then am able to see the monthly temperatures, some wind rose information. Where I live, if you've ever heard of the Edmund Fitzgerald, we have the gales of November that can be pretty intense in terms of weather and wind. Now we have these various widgets that we can flip over and any graph that's relatively flat, like the orientation of the building in that example, 
means that there's not much opportunity to save energy as compared to this operating schedule. Of course, a building that's only open one day a week, like a house of worship, compared to a 24-7 hospital, there's going to be a big difference in energy use. We have the ability to switch from metric to imperial. Metric's the default. We can also sort the widgets by importance, and then we can enter custom utility rates. Anywhere in the United States, this will be plugged in automatically based on your project location. However, it is adjustable if you have some sort of uh, discounts or credits that you can use. Now, when we, well, notice that you can click on the cost and it'll switch it to the EUI per square meter per year. For Imperial, it's EU, EU it's a KBTU per square foot per year. And then we'll also notice that the widgets now are in a different order. So that the ones listed at the top are the ones with a steeper graph that give us more opportunity to affect the energy use index, the EUI. And the most compelling thing about Insight is the fact that it calculated every input from the worst design, such as an uninsulated roof, to the best or a really good design, so, uh, for example, like R60. And then you can adjust the range for each one of these widgets. So you know for Minnesota where it's really cold, we have a really um, progressive uh, energy codes. The first thing we'd want to do is go in and adjust the bottom end up to meet the energy code. And the EUI updates instantly. And here you can see that we can see the ASHRAE 90.1 baseline back in the main view for this project. When we start having different projects, in this case I did three different projects for the same model but changed the building type from warehouse, healthcare, and office. And you can see the ASHRAE 90.1 baseline is different for each one of those runs.